Welcome to Dev Jams. This is where we talk with developers who are doing interesting, innovative, inspiring projects, normally when it comes to delivering or managing images and videos inside of those projects. And because I work for Cloudinary and this episode and this overall show is produced by Cloudinary, they are probably using Cloudinary in those projects too. My name is Sam Brace. I am the Senior Director of Customer Education and Community at Cloudinary. And we are so excited to be bringing you this episode where we're gonna be talking about content publishing using a few different pieces of technology, static site generators like Hugo, as well as the DCAP content management system, formerly known as Netlify CMS. And of course, Cloudinary, to be able to make it easy for you to be able to easily publish your files and create really exciting web presences with the overall mix that happened to be there. Thanks to the development work of Martin, who is a senior web developer at PM, which is a content marketing and creation company that is based out of Slovenia. So great work that's being done by him, as well as being used for some of their amazing clients worldwide. Joined with me for every single one of these episodes is Jen Brisman. She is a technical curriculum engineer over here at Cloudinary, and I'm so happy to have her here, here for this episode. So Jen, welcome to the program. Hey, how's it going? Good, 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 good. And I am so happy to have you here and I'm so happy to be talking to Martin here in a little bit, but yeah. tell me a little bit, why are you excited to bring Martin onto this program? Yeah, so as far as static site generators go, we've had people on the show that have talked about 11D, but we've never had anybody talk about Hugo before. And I've heard that it's really easy to use, even if you're not familiar with Go. So I'm, I'm excited to hopefully inspire our listeners to maybe give Hugo a try. So you're absolutely right. This is the first time we are talking about Hugo, which is great. And as you also said, we have talked about different types of static site generators in the past when it comes to this. And so it's not necessarily a new topic. I mean, you have all the way from Next.js to Jekyll, to Gatsby, all these different things that are out there when it comes mm -hmm. to being able to create content. And now, of course, Hugo being another flavor, another choice that happens to be out there, which of course Martin took. So this is a case where if you have ever decided, maybe I should check out Hugo and what they're doing, or as we've also mentioned, some of the things that are done with content management as we're gonna see with DCAP, this could be a really good way for you to explore another option that happens to be out there when it comes to web publication. So great, great point there. Now, one thing I do want to mention is that when we are taking a look at our overall content, make sure that you are remembering that we are going to be, here we go. <laughs> We're going to be talking about Martin's project, which he has available as a open repository on github.com. So if we are so inclined, make sure you're checking out the show notes and we'll make sure you have a full list of access to all of the things that we're going to be talking about today, including this overall project repository. So everything we're going to be covering, it's something that you can start accessing and start using right away within your own project. So this is definitely something that we hope you start to use and fork it, clone it, download it, whatever you need to do from GitHub, but be able to start incorporating this into your overall projects for content publication ease. And we should also mention that all of our podcasts that we have done for the Dev James program whether that's a live stream, whether that's a recorded podcast, those are all going to be available at cloudinary.com slash podcasts. And as you can see, we have years of content that happens to be available there for your learning purposes. So make sure to check that out once again at cloudinary.com slash podcasts. And finally, before we bring in our friend Martin, I should mention that the Cloudinary community is the go-to place to having peer-to-peer -peer conversations with other Cloudinary users. So if you hear about something on the podcast and you want to explore it to see if other users are using it, maybe in a slightly different way or with a different perspective than what we provide on this episode, make sure to be going to community.cloudinary.com where you can be able to have those conversations with users. And notice we also do have an associated Discord server if you do prefer to have conversations inside of Discord versus our overall forum-based service. So with that said, let's go ahead and bring on our friend, Martin. So, Martin, whoa, not bad. Martin, <laughs> welcome to the program. Hi, it's great to be here. Thanks for inviting me. So, Martin, I talked a little bit about you, mentioning PM, the course, the agency that you work for. I mentioned that you're a senior web developer, but let's get a little bit more flavor. Tell us a little bit about you and the work that you do. 
I'm a senior web developer. Uh, we're working with Jamstack since uh, 2020, I think, uh, when we introduced Netlify, Hugo, and Netlify CMS to our stack. And later on, Cloudinary, of course. Uh, so I'm focused uh, in that department, uh, which is mostly front end, but yeah, uh, yeah, uh, back end is kind of handled by all those services. Uh, I enjoy this tech and this work very much. So that's shortly about that, what I do. So you mentioned Hugo, which is kind of one of the big stars of the, in the overall project that we're going to be talking about here. So talk to me a little bit more about Hugo for those that aren't familiar with it. Maybe give us a little bit of detail of why you incorporate this as the static site generator in the projects that you're working on. Well, Hugo is very fast. I would dare to say the fastest static site generator. Uh, like for one project, uh, the, our, I guess, largest pro project that we have, uh, builds around 10,000 pages uh, and that happens in a matter of seconds. I would say some other generators would, would take minutes to build that. So that's one thing. Uh, another is it's very feature rich. So we, it's, it basically can help you with whatever problem you're having, with whatever solution you're looking for. Uh, for, for us, for instance, very important is having good content organization with uh, large sites, uh, a good inter internationalization support, uh, which is great and works well with uh, DCAP CMS. Uh, what else? Uh, the the templating engine is from Go. Uh, it's a little bit different than what some or maybe most of front-end developers are familiar with when using nunchucks and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, once you get used to it, it's really powerful. Uh, yeah, I could go on, but uh, that are, I guess, the most, uh, my favorite things. Well, and you mentioned a lot of really big important things too. So the fact that we, I know that we've seen, at least on the Cloudinary side, a growing community of Go developers. So it is to say that if you are familiarized with Go, it seems like Hugo might be a natural choice when you're choosing a static site generator. Is that correct? Um, actually, you don't have to know Go. Oh. I personally don't. Uh, so it's, uh, you just install it on your machine. Uh, and you're ready to go. All you have to know is uh, HTML and uh, yeah, you have to learn the templating, templating engine uh, and you're good to go. Yes. Oh, it's, it's even easier. And, and I like the use of go there too. Yeah. Good <laughs> thing. Excellent. Well, that's actually great another to hear. Great thing, uh, sorry. And another great thing with that is uh, it comes with uh, preprocessors and uh, JS band. The, the JS bundler uh, ESLint. So uh, you don't even need Webpack. You don't need even package.json if you, if you don't wish to. Uh, so yeah, that's one of the, also one of the big reasons why we chose it because uh, dependencies are, can be a big hassle. And this way we, we remove a lot of that uh, problems. That's awesome. Yeah, it seems like there's kind of a low barrier to entry, like it would be easy to get going within a day um, or less. And and it seems like the Go is more under the hood and it's not like, you, so you don't really need to use it. It's really okay if you don't work with Go on a regular basis. Exactly. Uh, you will you would need to know Go only if you want to contribute to the project, which is the <laughs> source, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, I must say very well maintained. I haven't found many issues with it. Uh, so yeah, big, big. Uh, chapeau to maintainers. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. This is like an advertisement for Hugo at this point. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but it just, it just seems like, it, and I was, I was doing some research too before our episode. It just seems like, um, like the go-to <laughs> now, now I'm thinking about all the ways that we're using go, get it going, um, go to, but yeah, it, it, it seems like, um, a really obvious choice if you're, if you're interested in doing fast work, which most developers are. So Let's see. Let's let's take a look at some of your code and see how see how this all works. Okay, so yeah, I would like uh, to to explain uh, how Hugo, Dcap CMS, and uh, Cloudinary could work together and how we do it 
with our projects. Uh, so first, uh, let me explain uh, a little bit how, how this project is set up. So this is how a Hugo project look like. Uh, you would get an assets folder where uh, we have our styles. Um, the CSS is uh, processed by Hugo, so we don't need a web or something like that for it. Uh, we have the content folder where we will store our content in uh, markdown files, uh, which have uh, bronze matter in YAML. Uh, then we have uh, a layouts folder where we will define our um, HTML. Uh, so this is uh, how, uh, how the templating engine uh, syntax looks like with the, with the curly braces. Uh, and then there's the, the static folder where we usually put assets that are not, uh, uh, not handled at build time. And we will put our admin, uh, so the CMS uh, in this project, but usually this would be where we store our media assets. But in this case, we will handle that with Netlify, uh, sorry, Cloudinary. <laughs> um, and yeah, there's the, the hugo.toml where we, we will define the settings for this, uh, uh, for this project. Um, so, uh, yeah, what we're going to do, uh, so we want to build a website, uh, just in this simple example that uses, uh, uh that has a homepage and a simple a block with some posts and we will connect the CMS where we can add those posts and most importantly, uh, add an image to this post and then, um, add transformations with Hugo to it. Uh, so, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's first try, let's first see how to add decap CMS, okay. which is really simple. All you have to do is add two files, one of which is index.html in your admin folder. Uh, by the way, this works with any static generator. Uh, you just have to put this into your uh, static public or um, whatever the name is of the folder for your uh, generator. In this case, it's static. And this is going to serve as a placeholder for um, for the CMS, so it's included via CDN, and this is a React app. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and another, the other file for this CMS is the config file uh, in YAML format, and uh, uh, this is where we that this is where the, all the magic happens. So we're gonna define uh, one. The most important collection is the block. It's a folder collection. So for all posts in this collection, uh, it's going to have the same layout. And I'm also going to define uh, a file collection where each post, uh, with each file here can have a different layout. In this case, I, I want to have uh, ability to edit the home page and the blog list page. Uh, so that's how I define that here. Um, uh, and another thing, uh, or uh, decap CMS, uh, has the, the default media library, but, uh, it's really easy to add, uh, Cloudinary as your media library. So all you have to do is add five lines of, uh, of code here. So we would just say the, the media library is Cloudinary. Uh, and you need to have your cloud name and uh, API key, and you're good to go. So if I if I bring up uh, my uh, hooker server to to uh, launch the the website and then uh, run the CMS locally, and uh, see that okay. So now this is the uh, the website that we're working on, and this is the the CMS, and so these are the two collections that I created. One is block where I have my, uh, my pages and, uh, and the pages list where I, I created, um, option to edit homepage and the blog list. 
And since I connected the media library, let, let me just refresh this. If, if I, <laughs> right now, so this was, this is the state before I commented it. I didn't save it. So this is the default, this would be the default media library. And if I save this and refresh, I get my media library. That's uh, great. Yeah. Uh, that I'm connected to, to one, one thing to note is to, you have to be logged in, in the browser to this, uh, cloud in every cloud that you're using. Wow. Okay. So you just have like, with those five lines of code that you just showed us that you just commented back in, you have a CMS that ships with Cloudinary with this media library widget. That's all you need. Exactly. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So, um. For now, let's, uh, let's see what we have here, uh, or let's create a new post, uh, and that title, uh, uh, I don't know, of this, um, I think this because I know which, which I'm going to choose. <laughs> uh, there we go. So I'm just choosing this image of an office and I click insert. And I, I have my image here. So if I uh, save this or publish this, and now in my uh, in my content in Hugo, I added the office.md where I, I said office. And what we're interested right now here, we have we stored our Cloudinary URL of this asset. So uh, let's see how we can show this asset and most important transform it uh, in a way that uh, cloud uh, cloudinary will send us back uh, the most efficient image uh, so that means we have to go look back at hugo the layouts uh, so we have the base of layout which is a layout that uh, all other layouts will use so here we, we define the head and import our styles and uh, scripts if we have if we have them. Uh, in this case, we need one script like Cloudinary that will um, that will get us the correct uh, width of of the image. And then we have um, three layouts. In this case, the index one is for home page, and uh, in the default uh, folder we have also list and single. Uh, layouts which are for the block. So the list would be uh, the one on this, so where we list our uh, articles and the single would be, if you click one of them, uh, that's the single layout. And let's see how we can uh, get this image and get the best possible transformation. Uh, and let's look at the single one. Uh, so. It's pretty simple. I print out the title, description, and then I created a partial, which in Hugo is like a component. So we can reuse this many times. And I'm reusing this on all layouts where I have images. So I don't have to worry about transforming them every time. And in this case, uh, let's see how it looks. So the, I'm going to open the image image partial and this is where the the magic happens of transforming so i want to be able to send in uh, some basic parameters which a uh, usual image tag in html would have uh, for instance the source with height a uh, style glass or something else so in this case the most important one is the source and if i I go back to, to the single. So this is what I'm sending in. Source is the parameter in, um, in image. Yeah, there we go. And I'm storing this into a, a variable that we'll, I will use later on. And I will also get a Cloudinary base URL and Cloudinary common transformations that I stored in my hugo.toml. Uh, because I want to make this stuff easy for myself and I will uh, apply the same transformations on most images that I store them in the global config. 
the, this uh, most common transformations that I found are best to use are uh, the crop fill, which will uh, so take any dimensions that you specify usually with, and then um, and then apply so crop it so fill that dimensions. Yep, you got uh, it. You got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, then gravity auto since a uh, field can um, change the aspect ratio. Uh, we want to make it, uh, uh, we want to ask Cloudinary, okay, gravitate to the most uh, apparent object in this image. Uh, quality auto, self explanatory and DPR auto. So this would be for, for instance, for retina displays, which have, uh, I think this is dot per people. Per, so basically how many pixels are there, how many dots are in a pixel. Uh, so retina displays would have two and normal displays would have value of one. And F auto means uh, uh, auto format, which is very useful because um, some browsers don't support modern image formats and Cloudinary will return the most efficient one. So. And I agree with all of this. Like, yeah, I just want to make sure it's clear. Like, this is great what you've done here. Like, this is a, a very good set of transformations that would apply for most use cases. So I think that why having that as the default makes a ton of sense when you're looking at optimization, make things are cropped to the right aspect, as well as to making sure that you're focusing on the most interesting aspect of the image, which is what your Giotto is having here. So this is great. Hopefully, people that are trying to figure out how to use Cloudinary and the transformations there they can use exactly what you've done, Martin, and say, great, this is a good place to start with. And of course, we have thousands of transformations, but this is a good place. Yeah. One thing I did want to ask you before we jump away from here is you do have the breakpoints that are emphasized. So you have the 1920, the 1440, the 1200. How did you come up with that designation? How did you decide these are the right breakpoints to be using for the various breakpoints you do have? Um. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm actually copy pasting this for a few years now. So, so in, that, that, that it shows it works. So it, it's, you found something that works and you can just keep repeating it. So once again, yeah. this is also a good test to say 1920, as we know, that's probably the screen width for a lot of high resolution images and that you have. So all the way down to 566, which probably work really well for mobile purposes. So, and you have a nice range that happen to be there. So I think this is good. And I also agree 100% what we have here. Not too many breakpoints, but not too little. So it hits a sweet spot for most viewports that you're going to be dealing with. So yeah, but we're, again, there's a lot of intelligence. Some steps are around 200. And some of these values are from, I think, common uh, CSS um, libraries like Bootstrap, stuff like that. I think I found yeah. that, I mean, these are pretty common. And for maybe listeners who are not watching the screen right now, so we have breakpoints defined from the uh, XS, so extra small, small, medium, large, extra large, and extra, extra large in the span of around 200 pixels from uh, 576 up to 1920. Uh, and yeah, uh, but these break breakpoints are not even used right now. Uh, this are just in because um, I use the, uh, like I wrote the, a small library for a breakpoint, so for a mixings, and I'm just copy pasting this in all my projects. So I love it. <laughs> and also for our listeners, I feel like it's important to note that Martin's globally storing these variables. So like the URL, cloud name, and all, the, all of these common transformations that we're talking about, those are stored globally. Um, so it can be used so that like when, He's doing a check. If it passes the check, the URL is built again. Um, and I think that's probably what we're getting, we're going to get into talking about now. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. And also what you said previously, Sam, that uh, these are some really common transformations and really Cloud Dynamic has tons and I would lo love to use all of them. They're really good, but um, I'm lazy and uh, <laughs> try to be efficient. And this is, I found like covers 80 or 90% of all cases. So that's why I'm storing this globally. I'm using this everywhere. And if 
if I see, if I'm like developing a uh, component and I see, okay, now I need a special use case, then I use something special. This would be like for most uh, use cases. Potential. And, yeah. Yeah. Let's now look um, how, how we're going to apply those. Okay. Well, in my uh, image partial, I get the source, I get these global values, uh, the base URL of cloud in every cloud and uh, the transformations that I talked about. And then first thing I want to do is check, is this even uh, image hosted on Cloudinary? Because what if editor adds in, I don't know, an image from GitHub or something else, somewhere from the internet. And then in that case, I can't transform it, right? So I'm going to skip that if it's not, but if it is, I'm going to split the URL and I'm going to uh, get the relative uh, assets URL. So just the, the last part or the slug, let's call it the slug. Um, I'm also going to get the width and the height if I send them in. So uh, I, I want to be able to, when I use this partial, define sometimes these values. And if I do, I want to uh, also use it in transformations. And when I have all that, I'm just going to combine this again together to get uh, the, the URL with, uh, with the paste, the, the transformation, and the slug, uh, which I stored here under the SRC variable. And then I'm just going to use this in the image tag because we're still in HTML. And one thing that uh, that's important also here uh, is that when you're using Cloudinary, make sure that it's data SRC and okay. use the class uh, CLD responsive because in the base of, we're using a library uh, called uh, Cloudinary Core Shrink Wrap, which is gonna, um, upon loading, uh, get the, the source and then get the width of the window and then get the, so change the request to URL and then get back the, the correct width, I think, rounded up, up to 100 pixels by default, or maybe a better solution to use this um, breakpoint that we defined. In that case, we're going to use less of our transformation because those can get out of hand pretty quick if we have a lot of images. And absolutely. And that's thanks to that W auto transformation you're also invoking there too. So that we're all working together in conjunction. So bringing in the right class, the right data source, being able to bring in the right JavaScript. But then because of the W auto, it's saying use the JavaScript to be able to give you the breakpoints that you're specifying. So that's also a great way where if you forgot to specify the breakpoints, or maybe let's say there's some brand new fancy device and you're like, what would the breakpoint for it? It can just automatically do that for you. So it's um, an e excellent approach. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah. So if it's not Cloudinary in this uh, image tag, let's just bring in the, the original source that we have um, and the class that it's. Uh, Stored. I use loading lazy because it's supported by most browser by this point. Uh, and then um, add in just some other um, attributes that maybe we want to set. Okay. I, of course, advise to always use alt, but I'm also guilty of not using it all the time. Okay. Well, it's a best practice for sure. So it's good you're doing it. So by the time that any of the images get to the website, they're already optimized. And I guess I say image, we're also talking about video here, right? Um, yeah, of course, this uh, goes for video too. Uh, one thing to notice then in the per, the base URL, we need a, a different um, different URL yeah. because uh, I'm storing this image here, but I, I could do um, Ordinary video URL and put here a video. I think I think that yep. works on the top of my head. Uh, and then I would just use this URL exactly. And I'm doing that also. And Martin, that was amazingly fast and very brusque. <laughs> <laughs> so um, 
yeah, now we can look how this looks actually in the browser. Uh, so this is our single layout, right? We printed out the title, description, and here we have the, the image with the partial. So um, we send in the, the data source, which, uh, uh, and then yeah, on the bottom, we have this uh, script, which, um, uh, which loaded up and took the, the width of this 600 pixels, which is probably um, the width of, of this browser. Yeah, so slightly less. It's only gonna round it up to the next 100. Uh, and yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna transform this URL. So, uh, the width, the height, uh, C field, G auto, Q auto, DPR 2.0, because I'm in a 2.0, um, screen, uh, and yeah, the format uh, is auto. So in that case, I guess it would be, would probably be, um, what could it be? Looks like it became a WebP if I see that correctly. Yeah. Uh, right now, I don't know where, where I would look at that, but it, uh, I tested it really uh, thoroughly and it always returns the best result. It does. It does. And yeah. it's, it's, and to your point, like it's a nice catch all, frankly, for optimization because WebP does seem to be supported by most browsers now, but it's also where if it doesn't see any improvement by changing it to WebP, we'll keep it as it's existing, which in that case would be JPEG. So it's aware there's no harm practically in setting F auto on it. It only will add additional features and additional improvements to the overall loading processes of what happens to be there. So I think it's a good thing to have. Exactly. Um, oh yeah. So th this was the post that we added. Yeah. So initially, um, why th there was a short lag, this image was transformed on the fly. But if I refresh now, it allows the so forward. Yep. Thank goodness for caching and content delivery networks, right? <laughs> so it makes it all very, very possible. And so this code that we're looking at, just just for the the watchers um, and listeners, is um, part of um, an an app that Martin put together to demo what he's doing on the Maester case, which is how Sam and I first heard about Martin and the work that he's doing at PM. So. Um, I thought it'd be cool to kind of look at the the Maestro website and see how fast everything loads and how beautiful it is and how important it is to have a beautiful website like this and why we were like, oh, we have to talk to Martin. This stuff, this is awesome. And it's it's so important. And really part of the reason why Cloudinary is 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 such an awesome product is because, you know, people are deciding on, let's just say, what hotel to book based on beautiful images, beautiful video. And um, you know, that's that's exactly what's happening here. So yeah, um, all this, wh what I'm showing right now is also used on this project. This is basically where uh, we came up for, with this solution. Uh, so obviously it's a website with a lot of images. It's a, uh, it's a hospitality group. So a chain of hotels, resorts, and campsites in Croatia. And uh, of course it's a uh, really, uh, have, it relies heavily on showing uh, visually what what they're selling, uh, so that's why um, we we had to uh, we we switched to Cloudinary because initially we were using um, first uh, Git large file storage for these assets for some of the uh, for some of the projects. Uh, Netlify also provides some of that with Netlify large file storage or Netlify large media. Uh, but yeah, we needed more. So, um, they came up with this for, for this project and now I'm using this approach, um, through also other projects because I find it, uh, easy to use and, uh, get, uh, the best results for the least amount of work. Cause I said, we I'm lazy. <laughs> but honestly, lazy is a good thing when it comes to development because it means you want things done quickly, you want things done the right way, but it's also where you don't want to put a ton of work into it having to have that happen because you have a lot of things you have to get done. So I think the lazy is not a bad thing by any means when we talk about it this way. But what I love about this is that what we've shown with this project you've developed where it's using Hugo, Decap, Cloudinary, 
it's not just used for, let's say, a personal project or a small project. This is meant for a major company that is representing hotels and resorts and campsites throughout certain parts of the globe. So, and what I love about this example that we're showing here is that to Jen's original point, can this be done for video? This expresses that it absolutely can, because if I just go ahead and use our media inspector on this real fast, and I go ahead and separate this, you'll see that you have this blank image here that's used as a placeholder in case the video doesn't load or for certain screen sizes, but it's doing exactly what you expressed it to do, where if we take a look at the image here and the browser bar, you're seeing that it's bringing for the biggest breakpoint you have here, the XXL, <laughs> the W1920. It's also using our C fill, our G auto, our Q auto, our DPR auto, and our F auto all together to make sure it loads perfectly. And then similarly, if we go ahead and take a look at the media details here, it's also doing the exact same type transformations for the MP4 that you have in the background, all that amazing B-roll and footage of the countryside that Maestro has gone and created. You wanna make sure you're expressing that as best as possible. So I love the fact that we took this project and we're able to show not only did you take a lot of time in developing it, but it can be used for real life projects too, just like we're showing here with the Maester site. Yeah, and I gotta say, like just having this B-roll and these awesome images and video going as we're talking right now, I'm like, oh, I really wanna go to Croatia. Like it really is important to have beautiful visuals to help people be sold on, on um, where it is they're going or what it is they're buying. So um, I understand why you, why you guys changed to Cloudinary when you were scaling up and um, uh, having this this big use case and this, this important company. And I'm glad to hear that you use it on other projects as well. I know we're talking about just this one, but glad to hear that when you kind of found something that worked, you decided to keep using it and keep going with it. Um, maybe because you're lazy or maybe just because you found a great solution that works and why, why change it if it works. Um, so let's talk a little bit about DCAP CMS. And and what happened with your journey there um, with PM and how it got to be that you, you're you working with them or taking it over? Yeah, that, that's an interesting story. So um, in this case, Maestro, we also used uh, Netlify CMS, which is, uh, I would say, not intended for such large websites. But when we research uh, CMSs, uh, we kind of didn't find anything else that would that would say that we would say okay this is obviously better because Netlify or now DCAP CMS had a lot of functionalities that are just not present in some of those and uh, yeah we were used to it so uh, we said okay let's go with it um, and yeah I, I I'm uh, I could say we tested the limitations of the CMS but. Um, I wouldn't say uh, we we have reached the limit, so or maybe we reached the limits, but it works in this text. So uh, yeah, we were really sad to see that. Like I think last spring, uh, Netlify kind of stopped maintaining it because they um, they turned their focus elsewhere, and uh, yeah, we were kind of uh, we were hoping that someone else would take up and nobody did so we were like okay we're using this cms we like it a lot uh we contributed a little bit to it and uh we had uh, good relations with uh, netlify and we said uh, hey uh, okay can we maybe um take over the maintainership if you're not interested anymore and yeah after some talks uh they said okay let's do it uh yeah, and then in February, we renamed it to DCAP CMS. And now we're, uh, we're working on our uh, first release, which, which will contain um, uh, a lot of updates, but not function functionally wise, just we need to bring up some old dependencies, some uh, tests are failing for um, no reason. So we want to make sure that we uh, that we bring the first release that's going to be uh, maintainable for the long run. This is incredible. And it, it's great to see the story that's behind this. And what I also love about this is that even though, yes, your team is now taking um, a major stake into it, the Netlify CMS has become, calling a DCAP and moving forward, it's also still completely an open source CMS. So 
It's where people can be contributing to it. It's something that's readily available for anybody to start using in the projects today. So it's great to see that the Netlify CMS found a great home and that you guys are fostering it really well. So this is great to see. And then, of course, how it's applicable for the various projects we've shown with what you've done here with Hugo and Cloudinary and Decap, and then also the applicability of the Maester site. So this is great stuff. Yeah, um, I have to say the the community is great. I think it's um, it's the best start uh, or the highest start. How, how is it called? Uh, uh, Git based CMS uh, on um, the Jamstack website where there's a list of uh, of uh, of headless CMSs, and yeah, we're really um, like. We're really happy to have this, but we're also aware of the responsibility we have to the community. Uh, and also the community is great. A lot of contributors were happy to see that this is going, uh, that this is going to continue. Uh, I know a lot of them are uh, maybe getting nervous because it's been now a few months since uh, we took it over and it's still uh, uh, as it was, but uh, yeah, we're, we're working this on this uh, as much as we can. The, the issue is a bit more complicated than we thought, but uh, yeah, we're gonna get there. We're committed. Very, very exciting. Very, very, very exciting. Yeah, anyone listening, just keep an eye out for their first release. And also Martin, congratulations, because I think that's just a testament to, you know, you'll never know if you don't ask. And the fact that you just asked, hey, can we take this over? We have the bandwidth and we care to do it well. And we know what we, feel like we owe to the community and you know we're going to do a good job and the fact that they just said yeah here you go um that's that's really cool that's awesome so martin before we break away from the project is there any final thoughts you have about it? anything that you say like let's say that you have a, a developer that's hearing this conversation we're like okay great i know that there's an open repository there's ways that i can easily implement the areas to this what are some recommendations any first steps any best practices that you've had way of working with this overall stack when it comes to content publishing? Um, yeah, I would say find, find the problem that you have and then search for the solution and try not to, to go with the, maybe uh, the most mainstream solution because today there's a lot of, I think, um, JavaScript frameworks in particular and a JavaScript based generators in particular are generating a lot of traction, but that's not necessarily what you need. So for, for a website like this, that, that doesn't, uh, use like loads of JavaScript, it does, I mean, it does actually, there's a lot of view behind this. Um, but for, for the, the core purpose of, of, uh, like having pages, uh, maybe, maybe look for a solution that actually builds HTML pages. And um, that's what Hugo does. And also a uh, Git-based CMS is something to consider with uh, like small to medium sized project uh, because you, your content is stored in your Git repository and uh, you can easily modify it. You can bring in a CMS that's free to use open source. It's really easy to install. And I think this setup is, is, um, has easy entry. So there's, there's not a lot of traction to use it. Uh, so yeah, maybe this rep demo repository that I made is going to help someone. Uh, but yeah, if anybody has some questions, they can also add me on Discord uh, and ask questions there. Or if they're interested in contributing to DCAP. They can join our uh, DCAP server, um, Discord server, or uh, just, you know, uh, write to, on the GitHub issues or discussions. Yeah. When you, you answered the question I was going to ask you, I was going to say, like, well, how do people get a hold of you, Martin? Like, if you have additional questions, but you did it very well, where I can see here on your GitHub um, main profile, you can see here that you have links directly to DCAP, you have areas to the overall projects you're working on. You have links to your LinkedIn, your overall. So it seems like if you, if people find you on GitHub and they point to the project that we are showing in today's episode, they have plenty of ways to contact you. And I'm really appreciating that you're willing to talk to developers if they have additional questions too. So that's wonderful. 
Yeah, and just if anyone doesn't know Martin's Discord handle, it's his first and last name. No numbers or uh, characters or anything like that. First and last name. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So Martin, thank you again for being here. This is this was wonderful, and I can't wait to see what you guys are up to. A decap and stay in touch. Yeah, it's been a pleasure, and keep up the good work with the podcast. Yeah. Wonderful. I didn't know it before, but now I'm I'm a regular listener. Oh, That's good. So thank glad. You, I'm glad. So, Jen. Yeah. I want to ask you, what's your big takeaway from here? What do you, what stood out from your conversation here with Martin? Yeah, um, a lot of things. I think, I mean, obviously we talked a lot about Hugo and I, I kind of was joking that it sounds like an advertisement for Hugo, but um, it's just really encouraging because, you know, there are a lot of static site generators out there, you know, besides 11D, you know, you mentioned a few and there's, there's Astro, there's Pelican and there especially because I think a lot of developers go with what they know. And as we kind of talked about on the web, on the episode, it's okay to go with what you know. It's not lazy. It's, it's, it's what works. But I think um, I would hear, oh, Hugo, that's with Go. I, I don't know Golang. I've never worked with that. And I, I wouldn't gravitate toward using it and trying it out. So I think a big takeaway is that Hugo doesn't, um, you don't need to work with Go previously. And there might be other static site generators out there that you might think there is a barrier to entry that there actually isn't. So I, I thought that was a, a cool takeaway for me. <laughs> no, absolutely. And, and you are right about that for sure. And I think one thing that was also really great to see is just how easy it was to be able to publish. I think yeah. it shows that what Net Netlify did develop with Netlify CMS and what it's becoming with DCAP CMS now, showing how easy it is to be able to publish through overall just Git is awesome. And he makes a really ec excellent point that the incorporation of just being able to render HTML, Markdown in that case, being able to easily create that type of content, it does work very well for, as he said, small to mid side projects. So it is yeah. something where I think this is a really nice package that he, he has gone and developed that makes it very easy for any developer when they're trying to say, we have a way to create a content authoring format for overall teams to be able to do. This yeah. is a great mix. So I was really, really proud to see what Martin and the team have pulled off. And of course, we're using Cloudinary perfectly. So I'm, I'm yes. excited to see that too. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, he really found all, all the best transformations and just really great use case in general. And, and I also just really like it when we were talking about DCAP, and I, I know I mentioned it before, but really uh, the initiative to reach out and, and just ask, hey, can, can we take this over? And um, when we were talking to Martin earlier, he said, even when he was learning to code, um, when he decided to go into it, it was, he was building a website for his band and, um, just decided like, okay, this is, this is something I want to do. And, and I don't know, I just think that a lot of developers take initiative and, um, and play around and, and figure things out. And, and we didn't even know when we asked Martin, um, that he doesn't work with Go regularly. He just works with Hugo and just, um, it's inspiring to hear that and just, uh, any developers listening, just ask questions, poke around. Um, it'll it'll pay off. Yep, I, I definitely definitely agree with that. And I can't emphasize enough. Take the chance to go check out the repo that Martin has gone and developed on his GitHub repository. Of course, this will be linked in the show links, but of course, it's also his main name and has links to many awesome repositories as well as well as many of the links on how to contact him. On top of all of this, of course, if you liked this episode, and hopefully you did then go and check out more of them. They're gonna be always at cloudinary.com slash podcasts. You can see that we have fantastic content from developers for over two years now being published in this space. So plenty of episodes to check back into and learn from the best and brightest in the overall development field, or those that were just emerging into the field, trying to understand how to properly work with images and videos in their projects. And lastly, but not indicating any type of priority, <laughs> it is to also say that our Cloudinary community is a great place to continue the conversations that took place in today's episode. So if you have questions about certain site, static site generators, some of the transformations that were covered, anything between working of images or videos, there was a lot of things that we did cover here today. Make sure you're checking that out at our Cloudinary community to talk with users like you. That's gonna be at community.cloudinary.com. So, on behalf of everybody at Cloudinary, Jen and I included, thank you for participating, being a part of this DevJams episode of us here today, where we will continue talking with developers who are doing interesting, innovative, inspiring things 
Images and videos in their projects. Take care, and we hope to see you at the next one.